to it. Let me, so let's break down what's going on when you do an instant induction. Okay? So if you think about this as being um, normal, normal consciousness, okay? That's your normal awake state. And this down here being deep somnambulism. Okay, which is a really, we say the word deep, but it's really levels of intensity. Okay, so let me explain what I mean by that. We're always in a state of suggestibility. Um, it's, it's the degree of intensity or the degree of openness to suggestion that indicates how much we're in the hypnotic state. Okay? If we were completely shut off from any suggestibility, we'd have difficulty communicating with other people. Uh, we'd have difficulty communicating with ourselves. When we get more intensity in the hypnosis, or what, what most people refer to as a depth of hypnotic state, we become more open to other people's suggestions, the hypnotist's suggestions, right? So we, our, our conscious guard kind of fades away a little bit and allows those suggestions to come in uh, and take hold, okay? So when we talk about depth of hypnosis, what we're really talking about is an in, the, the amount of intensity uh, because we're always, we're always in hypnosis, okay? Any questions on that, anybody? Okay. So, if this is our normal conscious state, right, so we're, we're kind of plugging along and we, uh, the, the hypnotist does something, right? In, in this case, we, we, we did a little jerk of the hand on Jeff and we'll, we'll kind of walk through the steps on that. That little jerk creates a, a spike in, in a person's awareness. The, um, the part of the brain called the amygdala, uh, which is kind of the... Um, the, the den, danger guard of the brain is, is always active. So as things are going around normally in the day, the amygdala is constantly looking for uh, possible situations of danger. So when we do a shock, which is uh, these instant inductions are called shock inductions. When we introduce a shock, uh, and a shock could be anything that startles the mind, okay? It's that feeling when you lean back too far in the chair and you almost fall, okay? That's a shock, okay? It's, it's that feeling when, when you're kind of standing there minding your own business and somebody bumps into you. That's, that's a shock. Or you're walking along and you trip on something on the sidewalk, that little stumble. It, that's out of, the normal, out of the normal range of your consciousness at that time and it triggers the amygdala to spike up and say, What's going on? Okay? Within that split second that the amygdala is, is triggered, you have a split second, maybe less than a second, to throw in one command. Okay? And we normally say sleep. Okay? You say sleep. And it's not, even though we know in hypnosis it's not really sleep, but it's kind of universally understood that when a hypnotist says sleep, that means you're going to go into hypnosis, right? So we spike the amygdala by introducing some kind of a shock. It spikes up. It says, what the? Right? And we say, sleep, right? And the moment we say, say sleep, your conscious awareness drops down here into a deep somnambulistic state. I mean, even to the point where you can create amnesia, anesthesia, analgesia, all sorts of uh, positive, negative hallucination. You get a really deep state of hypnosis. Now, if you don't do anything else, once they drop in there, then they're, they're immediately going to start recovering, and within just a few seconds, they'll be back to to conscious awareness. So, and this is so. This is where most people make a mistake when they're doing uh, an instant induction. Is they'll they'll give the command, they'll introduce the shock, they'll give the command at the right time. They'll drop the person in, and then they stop talking, okay? And so if you're not giving any communication to the subconscious mind, when it gets down here, it's going to say, well, you know, what do I do now? Well, uh, well, he's not saying anything, and there's nothing else going on, so I think I'll just recover and go back on 
with my normal activities. Why so, is it, why is it okay with the amygdala to do that? Well, because hypnosis is a hypnosis is an escape mechanism. Okay, so when the mind gets overloaded, the the subconscious mind takes over. So we we can react faster at a subconscious level than we can at a conscious level. As a matter of fact, when you put your hand on a hot surface, your subconscious mind knows that it's hot before your conscious mind does. So you'll jerk away before you feel the pain. Okay, so the amygdala and the reaction center of the brain are very close to each other. And so if we had to give too much conscious thought about how to deal with danger, we'd be dead before we could deal with it. So the amygdala triggers this response so that the subconscious mind takes over. Okay, and that's all this is. Is, is the amygdala saying, Sub, uh, conscious mind, we don't need you right now. I want to talk to the big gun, which is the subconscious mind. And so that's why you drop down into here. Okay? Because what we've told it is the amygdala is like, there's danger, what do I do? Okay, it's it's totally open to suggestion. We say, okay, sleep, which goes into the subconscious mind, and as long again, as long as it's not violating a core belief or putting the person in danger or something like that, the, the subconscious mind will take that suggestion and drop them into a deep state. But if you don't do anything else, the mind will recover very quickly. So what you have to do is just keep talking. You can do simple deepeners like I did with Jeff, was just deeper, deeper, deeper. Okay, you're just trying to tell the subconscious mind, you're down here right now, I want you to kind of stay here. Okay, and so as long as I keep talking to him and, and giving him some direction, go deeper, relax even more, um, I put some, some various uh, boilerplate uh, patter in there about uh, noises around you aren't going to disturb you, they're going to help you relax even more, and we'll go over some of those boilerplate things. But the, the key thing is it really doesn't matter what you say to the subconscious mind, as, as long as you just keep talking to it, because as, as, as long as you engage them, the, the subconscious mind doesn't try to recover right away. Okay? Now, if, you, if, you're, if you're saying nonsense stuff that's a threat, then of course the subconscious mind will reject it and they'll bounce back up here. But as long as you're just giving guidance to stay at the level that you want them to stay at, they'll pretty much stay down here. Okay? Any questions on any of that? And it's based um, on the trust that the individual has and the permission that they've given. Yes. 